Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 229 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, uh, filmed in glorious 4K, which means uh, I, I do have to lint roll my T-shirt because apparently if there's a single cat hair on my fucking T-shirt and some incel is watching on a 4K monitor, that's an issue. So I thought I would just fucking clear that right off the bat. Uh, and just just make sure that I'm fucking really lint-free for the rest of the hour, all right? Fuck you. Welcome to the episode. Uh, tickets are on sale now to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival shows. Spears on stage. Uh, it's going to be fucking great. Actually, that's not what the show's called. It's Back in the Trenches. Spears on stage was a show that I had to fucking cancel. I'm a marketing genius. Back in the Trenches is on sale now. The first Saturday show has sold out. Told ya. Told you they'd go quick. The first show sold out, or first Saturday sold out already. Lewspears.com. If you want a weekend show, Friday, Saturday, buy it fucking now, right? There's a month until the first week of shows, but they're going quick. Uh, don't miss out and feel like an idiot uh, because they're selling out already. Told ya, Afterpay available. And, right, to all of you dumb cunts that put all your money into Dogecoin, I'm happy to announce that I accept Dogecoin on my website, as well as uh, all of the other cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Ripple, uh, Lite, I already said Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, and I also accept Monero. Although someone did say that uh, accepting Monero is illegal in Australia. I've done some Googling. Couldn't figure out if it, it's if I could be sent to prison for accepting Monero. No, I know it's a privacy coin, which the government doesn't like because that's what everyone uses to buy drugs because uh, it's untraceable. But can someone clarify whether or not I'm going to go to jail for accepting Monero? Because I Googled it and it looked like it was illegal to sell Monero as an exchange, right? You can't buy Monero and sell Monero in Australia, it seems. But I can't work out if it's... Legal or not to accept Monero payments. That's what I would like to know because if so, I might have to, you know, remove that coin and the rest of them will be great. Jeez, it's really hard to fucking... Uh, I'm a big believer in cryptocurrency, but it's very difficult to convince other people that it's legit uh, when you announce that you accept it and one of the top comments is, uh, pretty sure if you accept that payment, you're going to prison, Lewis. So I would like to just fucking say that that, you know, if you really think the cryptocurrency is the future... You might want to be a little bit more cautious about uh, which one of them you accept on your website because if, you know, uh, fucking Bill Gates sees that you can go to jail for using a certain type of crypto, maybe he won't start selling Windows 10 with it. Not that you'd want to buy Windows 10, but you know what I mean, you know? It's like... I fucking, I was so stoked to accept crypto because I'm like, man, I'm going to be part of the future, part of the solution. I'm going to make this shit possible, you know? Fiat's done. We don't want to use cash. Oh, the Australian dollar, boring. Let's get on to the future of payments and make a big announcement. Every single fucking comment on my Facebook uh, was just scam fake bot accounts going, did you know you could make a billion million dollars by messaging this cunt on WhatsApp? Fuck, man. These people would make a lot more money if they just bought Bitcoin and shut down the scams and then let people fucking use it. It's all these scams that are making Bitcoin look like a scam. <laughs> Jeez, this thing would look a lot less like a scam if there weren't so many scams around. But look, guys, the point is... You can buy a ticket, right? And, and you know, in fucking 20 years, when Bitcoin is worth $10 billion, which is a 100% a guarantee, put the house on it, you know, fucking fi refinance the house. That's right. Mo mortgage your home and put it all into fucking Monero, go to prison, and then when you get out in 20 years, that you'll be a billionaire, right? That's what I'm saying. I guarantee it. This is financial advice. No, it's not, all right? But if you buy a ticket to my show with fucking Bitcoin, in 10 years when it's worth $2 billion of coin, you can be that fucking moron that everyone references who bought the pizza, you know? Like, you'll be in news articles. You'll be on fucking CNET 10 years from now. James bought one ticket to the Lewis Spears show in 2021, which is embarrassing enough, buying one ticket. I guess the guy has no mates. 
But even more embarrassing than that, that $35 ticket today, in today, if it was today's Bitcoin price would be worth $10 million. And I'll be buying that house and you'll be suffering. No, guys, I'm joking, all right? It's fucking cool to buy one ticket and go to shit by yourself. I do that all the time. And I've been noticing a few people doing that as well. Whenever I see, whenever I see some cunt buy 10 tickets, I'm like, oh, feel sorry for that guy. He had to organize all those people. That is a hassle because I've been that guy organizing fucking eight friends to go to the movies or to attend this concert or whatever the fuck. That's a bitch. No one wants to be that guy, but that guy from an artist's point of view is a fucking hero. I'll always respect it, right? But then they, I, every now and then I'll see like a transaction come through for, for two, three. Yeah, cool, whatever. That's pretty normal. Let's go see Lewis. We'll take some friends. Who wants to come? Maybe my friend and my girlfriend or... Or, or the Discord group, we'll go see the cunt, right? Cool. That's the standard. When I see a cunt put through an order for a single ticket, I immediately go, big dick, fat pussy. That, like, big dick energy is going to a comedy show by yourself. That's fucking... That's like a seven incher. And also when I see it with the female name, I instantly think fat pussy. That pussy is obese. That's some ushy gushy shit. <laughs> Buying the single ticket on a Wednesday night coming by yourself, alpha energy. I have to respect it. I love doing that shit. Sometimes I think truly the most enjoyable experience you can have seeing something that you enjoy Music, movie, comedy, whatever, is going by yourself. I love it. Because sometimes, like, uh, this is more, probably more of a music thing than a comedy thing. Sometimes, fucking, when I've gone to shit to, to music artists with friends, I'm sitting there worrying if the other cunt is enjoying it or not. Or I've been on the other end where I've gone with a friend and I know that I'm not enjoying it as much as they are. And I just really am putting it on a little bit. You ever been that, that guy at the show that your friend took you to and you're just fucking standing, you know, right at the front and they're like, oh my God, this is the best night of my life. I love this band. And you're kind of sitting there going, fuck, I wish I was at the back. You know, like this is, it's not bad, but I don't want, I'm, I don't want to be here at the front. You feel like an imposter. Like, man, I'm really taking a fucking stand spot here. What am I doing in the front row? And then your friend looks at you like they're, they're about to come. They're like, this is the best fucking night ever. I love this song. They know all the words and you're just going, ah, it's all right. The bass is hurting my chest. I want to go home. My feet hurt. But you don't want to hurt your, you know, your, your, your feet may hurt, but not as much as your, your friend's feelings would be if you fucking went five rows back. You know, that's what, that's, that's, you know, what I'm saying is buy them now. All right. Loosebeers.com. They are going quick. I am so fucking stoked to be out of lockdown. I Look, I'll, I'll be the first one to say it. Guys, I'm happy. Well, I'm ashamed to report that I'm, I may not be the COVID oracle anymore i may not know everything for a for a minute there i was spot on with everything where i was like they're going to do this and then they're going to do that and guys I'm, I'm i'm very ashamed to say that i was wrong for the first time in the history of this podcast the history of this show over 200 episodes almost 250 episodes haven't said a single thing that was wrong but last week i said made a big call based on zero research that I think this lockdown in Melbourne was going to get extended. And I'm very sad to say, but also happy to say that uh, Melbourne's free. We're out of lockdown and I was wrong uh, for the very first time. And I want to say to all of the listeners, I know you come here because you trust me and I'm always right. And I know you come here because this is such a well-researched, uh, well-developed show. We have a whole research team here at Spearhead Sunnies. And all they do is around the clock is they just Google things and uh, tell them to me like they're true. And I believe it. And, and for, for that level of, of research, you know, we have an entire fucking research team that just goes out into the world and listens to other people's conversations uh, and and believes the more confident guy, and then they report that back to me, and then I tell you like it's a fact. You know, like we have a guy who I've been paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in Bitcoin a year to just sit in a in a pub. 
uh, and listen to conversations and 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 especially arguments and wild conspiracy theory. And if there's one guy having a debate with another guy about whether or not Hillary Clinton uh, is uh, a lizard that eats babies uh, and harvests their adrenochrome, he will just listen to that and whoever sounds more confident, he will just tell me uh, and I will then tell you as if it's gospel, which it is. And, and that costs me a lot of money in Bitcoin, uh, which if you think about the price of Bitcoin in the future, costs me billions of dollars. If I'm spending millions today in 10 years, that's billions. So I just wanted to say that that guy's been fired uh, and we are moving very swiftly to execute him because I just think that for me to, you know, uh, tell you that lockdown was probably going to get extended because this guy said he heard another guy in a bar tell another guy that Peter Credlin uh, posted uh, on Facebook, she works for Sky News, uh, a screenshot of some legislation that said emergency powers would happen uh, a, for a week after the initial lockdown. And for, for him to hear that guy tell another guy and then tell me, uh, and then I told you, that's just not on. So he will be executed in probably the most painful way we can think of. Uh, I'm thinking uh, an acid or some kind of maiming with the use of, of wild animals. We're, we're still working out the logistics of it. We want to do it in a COVID safe way. Uh, and of course, budgetary constraints do restrict this. But if you would like to help me execute this man, in the most painful way possible. You can buy a ticket to losebeers.com. 100% of the proceeds will go to capital punishment for my employees. Um, and at the moment, I'm, I'm not going to be executing Keelan, but I am thinking about it. You know, one more spelling error, he's got to go. <laughs> like one more, one more fucking usage of the wrong your, he's done. He's got to go. You know what's fucking a real bad look on Keelan's part is that he doesn't edit the real talks anymore. He does them sometimes every now and then, and I do some. But what's really a bad look on, on Keelan is that he's been pretty much hands off with the real talks for a while now. Uh, and they've been moved on to a new guy called Jackson. Uh, and Jackson is just as, if not worse, at spelling than Keelan. Uh, and, but the problem is because Keelan was such a poor speller on all of my social media posts and I am too fucking dumb. I would like to say that I'm too busy to notice the errors, but it might just be me being dumb. As someone who frequently reads and I think has quite a big vocabulary and is a very good speller, I rarely spell things wrong. But for some reason, when I watch shit, that other people edit, I don't pick up on the spelling errors. So I don't know what the fuck's going on there, but the point is it's a very bad look on Keelan's reputation that even when someone else is making the spelling error, people just assume it must be Keelan and they tag him and try to make him feel bad. And then he says, I didn't edit this one. And I understand that, that it must be very frustrating for Keelan to have to put up with that. Some other guy makes a mistake and he gets blamed for it. But I, I would just like to restate that, that the, the point that I think people are trying to make unintentionally, they're making this point, which is even though you're not editing, editing them, the result is the same, you know, like, and no disrespect to Keelan or Jackson. They do great work. They're very valued members of the team. But I do think that it's kind of funny that some other guy is making the spelling errors. And I would say that it happens every video that gets put on Instagram. It seems that a spelling error just makes its way through. I miss it. I'm not blaming them. Ultimately, it's my fault for not noticing and going fix that up. They're focused on making the video look good and, and cutting it well and editing all the other stuff. Editing, spelling is on, on the bottom of the list. Ultimately, it's my fault, but I do think it's quite funny that another guy has taken over the responsibilities. Keelan goes, I didn't edit this, bro. But people not noticing that means that if he were to start editing again, the spelling would be just as bad. <laughs> and that is kind of funny to me. You know, it's like, bro, I didn't do that. It's like, yeah, but you're getting tagged in it because it has, you know, 
the markings of your editing, which is poor spelling. And I love Keelan and I love Jackson and they do great work here. But I'm not going to lie and sit here and tell you, the loyal listener of Spearhead Sundays, and say that they're not up for execution. It's not going to happen now. It's not going to happen this month. But, you know, i got to post a real talk every day. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Is that appropriate to, to, to threaten execution publicly? to the guys that are like an integral part of your team? I would say no, but I would also say quite funny. So I will continue to do so. You know? <laughs> Working for me, I like to build the most positive workspace privately, but then publicly quite toxic. It's almost like the opposite of all of these other YouTubers, you know? All these all these cunts like David Dobrik, he's getting cancelled by the people that used to be in his vlogs saying that publicly it was all sweet and nice, but privately it's quite toxic. I, Lewis Spears, Spears, I, Lewis Spears, promise here and now to make my workspace privately the most wonderful, inclusive, unproblematic and rewarding experience. However, publicly, it will be toxic. And that's my promise to you, the listener, and my employees. Privately, great boss. Publicly, talking about getting you executed. And I would love to see an expose video similar to the ones that are happening with David Dobrik, where perhaps a former employee comes out against me and says, look, Publicly, it looks horrific to work for Lewis. He talks about capital punishment. He says that all revenue from ticket sales will go towards chopping fingers off for spelling mistakes. Uh, he, he makes fun of us. Uh, but I just wanted to say that never judge a book by its cover and you should really reevaluate who you choose to support as a consumer because Lewis Spears is a fraud and privately he's actually a pretty good guy. So I I don't know like how you can live with yourself if you continue to support Lewis Spears hoping that he is the guy that he presents himself to be because I have never been whipped. Right? I've never made a spelling mistake and had my entire desk flipped and then hot coffee thrown in my face. That's just a front that Lewis Spears puts on for the Spears on his podcast because he thinks it's funny when privately he's actually a really nice guy. I even earned a bonus this, this year, all right? Lewis told you that if I made another spelling mistake, he would set dogs upon me, but I earned a bonus this year. I'd love to see that video. I reckon that, I mean, that wouldn't go viral at all, but it would amuse me personally, maybe some of you. I would find that thoroughly amusing. Guys, I am, you know why I'm truly in a good mood? You know why I'm really happy? Because Facebook just banned news. And not even really just news, all mainstream media posts. This is fucking TV, fucking reality shows, radio, news, literally Every type of mainstream media platform just got fucking nuked from Facebook. And I would just love to say this right now to all of the cunts in Australia that really just tried their hardest to completely ignore every uh, online creator, every new generation of comedy, of entertainment, every single person in this new wave of entertainment uh, who the old mainstream media tried to block out, ignored, denied any type of funding or grants from, talked shit publicly about. I would just like to say, told ya. <laughs> told ya. Hey. Hey, post on Facebook. Oh, what? You're going to fucking... It turned down the, the world's biggest crowdfunded comedy special? All right, bro. I'll post about it instead. 
Not going to see that anything from you on Facebook, am I? No, nah, I love it. I think it's fucking great. Now, I want to say, I'm going to try and break this down in the, in the clearest and most entertaining way possible. Why has this happened, okay? So this goes back to the video that I made about the news media bargaining code, which was, uh, let's be honest, a law that was uh, lobbied for by a News Corp to the Liberal Party, uh, which is just like a, a such a fucking blatantly obvious corruption esque vibe. The first draft of the law was to make Google, Facebook, social media giants pay journalists or media companies to post on their platforms, which, by the way, they already do, based on how much content based on how much traffic that content generates. For example, me. I get lots of views. I get lots of money. I get no views. I get no money. That's how it works for everyone. News Corp wasn't happy with that. They wanted uh, money to post regardless of traffic, saying that uh, most people use social media for news. Now, we all know that that's false. I'm a guy who creates stuff for social media. If that were true and I wanted to make money, I would just post news. I don't, because no one wants to fucking see that shit. Your mum might want to see it a little bit. Most people don't. Most normal people are sick of the fucking news. Or we would like to look at it sparingly, in bursts. Check it in the morning, see what's going on, turn it off, never think about it again. In an ideal world, all social media is like Facebook. I think that social media and news needs to be separated. I don't think, I really truly think that news and social media being combined has created the toxic state that we live in. Or at the very least, the idea of clicks equaling money has turned news into the most fucking flagrant controversial, loud, and uh, uh, fucking divisive business model that it is. That's It's turned into this fucking, oh, outrage means clicks, clicks means money, journalism goes from speaking truth to power to making cunts angry for money. That's what it is, right? So the Liberal Party goes, right, well, we're going to make it uh, a law for, uh, are we going to make it uh, mandatory for Google and Facebook to pay these companies for what they post, no matter what they post? And however much money they get paid will be decided by a, in quotation marks, third party. Also, uh, the first draft of the law, this is how you can tell that it is literally a favor to News Corp so that they give better press to the Liberal Party as they do anyway. You, this is how you can tell it's literally a favor. The first draft of the law specifically excluded ABC, right? Which it didn't have to do, which if it was truly a law to support journalism would include the fucking government-funded broadcaster, right? Very, very fucking obviously, transparently a favor to News Corp, right? So Google and Facebook lobby against this hard, uh, the only one, the one point of the code that I do agree with is the point against Google. And I think this is even what Google agreed to do because Google is, uh, kind of negotiated with us a little bit and is going along with the code. Facebook has gone, fuck you. We don't need news. The one point that I did agree with, which was the whole argument is, oh, you guys make money from news and you don't cut us in, which is fundamentally false for Facebook. But there's a little bit of truth for that in Google. Google will do things like say you you search the weather, like what's the weather in Melbourne? And then it will show you that little preview within Google search that just shows you the answer to your question. This happens with like even shit from like Star Wars, like who is Emperor Palpatine or uh, is, you know, fucking, who is Luke Skywalker's father? You Google that and it'll show you the little preview and you get the answer to many of these questions, nature, literally anything you Google, most of these things have these little previews that tell you the answer without you having to click. That data is taken from a website that did the research, that posted on their site, and then Google takes the answer, 
puts it on Google search. So you see that information that you were looking for without clicking on the article. So the people that actually spent the money and spent the time to find the answer don't get any money from you. Uh, and instead Google does. That's the one point of the code that I do agree with. If Google is going to use that information and make money from it, they need to cut the people in. I agree with that wholeheartedly, um, but that's not a news thing at all. That's like a fucking, you, you Google a fucking Warhammer term. That happens to every website. That's just a Google thing. I agree with that and Google should pay for that. That's where it ends. The code is to make uh, Facebook and Google pay for posts from media companies and the law specifically excluded ABC, government funded things, and also it excluded small uh, journalist businesses. So you needed to em employ, f you need to be like grossing $150,000 a year and employ four journalists. Uh, and you can't really employ four journalists unless you're making way more than $150,000 a year because you also need to make some profit, right? You pay four journos 60 grand a year, what is that, fucking six, twelve, two hundred forty thousand, 240000 and then you, the boss, also needs to make some money. Like, it's really exclusionary to uh, any independent journalist, and it is really just a law to benefit News Corp so that they give positive press to the Liberals so that they keep winning fucking elections. That's my conspiracy theory, but it's pretty fucking blatantly obviously true. Facebook puts out the truth, and so do Google, and they say... These news corporations are already paid and we don't benefit from the relationship they do, which is 100% true. The reason why I have a Facebook is so that I can put my links on Facebook so that you watch them on YouTube so that I make money or so that you buy a ticket to a show or you get a fucking t-shirt. I don't make money from Facebook at all and Facebook probably makes a little bit of money from me, but it's not fucking heaps. The amount of money that I make from Facebook is way more than the other way around. And the same is true for all of these fucking things. And the claim that News Corp is trying to make saying is, is them saying, look, everyone goes to Facebook for news. So Facebook was like, all right, let's call bullshit on that one. And they just banned news. All types of news content is just gone from their platform. I think that this gives Facebook the perfect excuse to kind of test how does our traffic look and how does engagement look and how do people interact with our website when there is no news? Me, personally, I've been using Facebook a little bit more. There's less fighting. There's less fucking, this is what you should think. There's less doom, generally, on Facebook. It's, I think it's fucking great. And I think that this is such a genius power move from Facebook because they've put all of these news corporations into a corner. Uh, now, I will say about this, do not listen to pretty much any journalist's opinion about this because they are inherently biased. If Facebook banned comedy and you turned on my podcast, what do you think I'm going to tell you? I'm going to tell you, hey, this is bad. This is a bad thing and you should all stand up to Facebook and let them put comedy back. This is a bad thing. I mean, it would be a bad thing, but also I would mainly be saying that because fuck, I need the traffic. How am I going to sell tickets without social media? Right? So Facebook has done, I think, a genius play here where all of these news corporations who were fighting for the code were saying the false statement, which was everyone goes to Facebook for news and Facebook, us posting our stuff to Facebook is costing us money. Us putting our stuff on Facebook is costing us money, so Facebook needs to reimburse us. Now, Facebook's point was you posting to our platform makes you money. It gives you exposure. You have your own platform. You have TV. You have radio. You have your own websites. You don't need to post your shit on Facebook. You post your shit on Facebook to get more people to have a look at your fucking thing. We don't make money from you doing that. You make money from you doing that. So we don't need to pay you money because you're already getting paid from using our services. That's Facebook's hypothesis. News says otherwise. So Facebook said, all right, then, if posting your shit to our platform is costing you money, see you later. We just saved you cash. You're welcome. And now the news cannot post there. So what you're going to see here, this is why I think it's genius, is News Corp, these big media, mainstream media corporations, they cannot say that Facebook 
should let them post. They can't say that the ban is bad without admitting that they benefit greatly from Facebook, which debunks their argument that them posting the Facebook costs them money and brings Facebook traffic. What Facebook's going to do now is now that they've banned them, they're probably going to come out and go, okay, so we got rid of news and our traffic stayed exactly the same. So you saying that people go to Facebook for news is wrong. Also, your traffic has halved. So you also saying that you posting to Facebook costs you money is also wrong. The value we provide to you is the platform that we give to everyone. So post here for free and make your money or fuck off. And how do you argue with that? I think it's fucking genius. I think it's great. I think it's a brilliant move. And I'm honestly happy because this news media bargaining code is absolute horse shit. It is a fucking broken, stupid law. And what's really interesting, I think is that what you're going to see, and Friendly Geordie's also mentioned this as well, is Australia is so fucking backward in the sense that they think these mainstream media corporations are the key to winning elections when the answer is actually social media and the internet, which is what you're seeing in fucking America. Donald Trump won the election because of memes. Literally, he won it because he was funny on social media and he had the biggest following on social media, and that's why he won. The first one. The second one, I think he fucked up, and he didn't do that again. Did you notice in the second election he wasn't funny? He didn't do the shit that he was going to do. The debates were boring. There were no memes. I think that's why he lost. Because it was fucking kind of close there. I honestly think he lost because he was boring. No one wanted that. We wanted 2016 Trump again, who was made us laugh. I was for him in 2016 because I thought he was funny. Then I went against him because I thought it was boring. I got no fucking dog in the fight here. I want the most entertaining guy to run America. Joe Biden, boring. Get the funny guy back in there. Right? I think it's what, what you're going to see here is the fucking politicians kind of realize, oh shit, news isn't that important to us. It is now, but long term, it's not that important. What's way more important to winning an election is making Facebook and Google happy because, and I'm kind of parroting friendly Geordies here, if you piss off Google and Facebook, Facebook has already nuked the news, which is, you know, the Liberal Party's biggest asset is News Corp loves them and so do the other fucking people, Nine Entertainment, who own most of the biggest platforms in the country. They love the Liberals. They always post good shit about them, which does help, you know, genuinely. If that's gone, fuck, that's their fucking propaganda machine, ethered. And then if Google, you piss them off, and if Google wants this code abolished, every time you Google Scott Morrison, maybe you'll just see bad things. Maybe you'll just see awful stuff. And maybe that has a real effect. And they fucking lose the next election, Labor abolishes it, all of a sudden, everything goes back to normal. And the Liberals and Labor kind of realize, oh, fuck, we don't need to, you know, impress News Corp here. We really need to impress Google and Facebook. This is my, this is conspiracy theory talking. One of my researchers heard this in a strip club, but it is, it is a fucking interesting thing of like, if you really want influence, you don't really want to fuck, you don't need these mainstream media people. You do to an extent, but what's more important is the social media, the big tech giants. Those are far more important for influence. I mean, you look at me. I tried with mainstream media. I got on radio. I had a radio show. I think the radio show was amazing and great, and I missed doing it. But fuck, I reckon I got five fans from it. Literally, I reckon I got five people who had never heard of me and Luke, heard us in the car, thought we were funny, and then followed us, and maybe that sold one ticket from the whole fucking run. Meanwhile, the podcast that we do, which is infinitely smaller in terms of listeners daily... You know, you go on radio, you got like 60,000 people listening to you concurrently the whole time, minimum. You go on a podcast, we got, what, 10,000? So much more powerful, though. 
that's where true influence is because it's fucking real. Um, so I think it's great. I think it's truly fucking great. And I think it's a very smart power move from Facebook that also allows them to do a little bit of market research of like, hey, how do our users respond without news? I honestly, and I've been seeing a lot of people enjoying Facebook more. There's no fucking angriness. I mean, there was a little bit on that anti-masker real talk I did, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but fuck. For the most part, people are quite happy. Um, And I just think it's quite funny to picture myself, like imagine being a journalist that works for one of these giant fucking companies. You studied a journalism degree for four years and you got stuck on a desk writing articles, top 10 fucking articles of like, oh, here's what fucking free to wear TV show you should watch. And this is what happened in The Bachelor last night. Oh my God, get a new job. But imagine being that person and posting on your own Twitter feed about how bad the news ban is and seeing just nothing but elation. Imagine if I was like, oh, I have to quit comedy. And 100% of the people who followed me and even people who don't follow me just responded, oh, finally, we were so fucking sick of you. Imagine that. That sucks. But also very funny. That that's really what the fucking news and journalism has turned itself into is just the most the biggest pack of unlikable blue check cunts you could ever imagine telling everyone what to think and feel and why they should feel bad, but then uh, acting morally superior while also just writing top 10 lists of the craziest moments that happen in reality TV this week. Sponsored by Swiss Vitamins. Imagine just being that and then just seeing all these people just fucking so elated and stoked that you cannot post and interfere with their life anymore. That is truly awesome. And, I, and I'm here for it. I love that. And it really does make me feel great to see all of these mainstream media platforms that just, and all these people, all these comics, entertainers, journos that really put their stock in this and really tried to block me and others like me out of it, sitting there watching me post dick jokes while they have to post on their fucking app that no one looks at. Told ya. And that's great. And that's just a little bit of vindictive spears rubbing salt in the wound there. Um, I wonder what happens with this. I I reckon the government backs down. I do think so. I think that, I mean, the law's fucking stupid. It's not good. And it's, but also the law is created by people who don't understand social media at all. And that's fundamentally the fucking issue. And that's, you know what, that is also a big reason why I think Trump won was because he was the first guy, first old guy, all politicians are old guys who are out of touch, but he was the first out of touch old guy to employ 19 year old dickheads who actually understand the internet to make, run his social media. And that's why he was so successful. Um, And he also, he, he understood social media, actually, that's probably wrong. Look at all the stuff that he did on Twitter. He he knew how to rile people up, clearly. I mean, cunts were storming the Capitol for him. He knows how to rile up a crowd on social media. But I think the the biggest problem with all these laws is that it's they're, they're created by old people who don't understand social media at all. So if a fucking journalist walks up to them and goes, oh, Facebook is screwing us, they don't, why would they understand the relationship? They can barely operate their phone without using two hands and holding up to their face. Of course they don't get it. So I think, I'm not sure. I think maybe that maybe this law goes away or maybe it stays in place and Facebook just goes, yeah, fuck you. We're just not having news. I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting thing. And it, it is fucking funny seeing how angry like these liberal politicians and then news, newsos and journalists uh, and mainstream media organizations are like so angry at Facebook. And it's like, cunt, this was your idea. I said it in my video, in my real talk. It was your idea. You said that uh, Facebook should pay you or you would stop being on their platform. And Facebook just said, okay, S- deal. You know, like it was your fucking idea. You're the, you guys are the ones that brought this idea into space that Facebook should pay for news. So Facebook said, all right, sweet, we won't. And we won't have news. Like you can't get angry at the result here. It was your idea. 
It's the fucking game that you invented. Sleep in the bed, you mate. So I think that's sweet. And I love seeing that the only fucking news sources now on Facebook is like me and the chaser. Friendly Geordies and Batuta Advocate just posting jokes and everyone's just celebrating. How fucking fuming would you be if you were a journalist like reading the comments of everyone just going, fuck yeah, no news. Amazing. Truly awesome stuff. Um, Let's pay the bills here, shall we, before miscellaneous bit at the end. Guys, this episode of Spearhead Sundays is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping for the Lawnmower 3.0 and anything else you may need from Manscaped. The best ball trimmers in the fucking game. In the game. I am looking very nice down there. Quite nice. I'm looking very, very spick and span. Quite schmick, if I say so myself. I'm looking, dude, you, you want a buff to your size? Trim that shit. But do it properly. Don't use a razor. I've done that. Big mistake. Awful. You ever had an ingrown hair on your ball bag? Bad, bad, bad. Did that when I was fucking 17. Regret. Never do it again. Ever. Fellas, how's your beach bod treating you? Manscaped TM is here to ensure your post-quarantine body is ready for the wild. Don't be the guy at the beach with a bear rug on your chest. And if you grew some quarantine man tits, body shaming alert, the least you can do is make sure that they're hairless, you fat fuck. Huh? If you've been, if you've turned into a disgusting fat piece of shit, fuck you. But also buy a razor. You know, like I love, I really love the messaging here. If you're fat, you're a disgusting slob and we're ashamed to take your money. Shave your tits, you piece of shit. You fat, man-titted blob. You rubbery, soft fuck. Shave your tits, fatty. And use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest shave, especially you fat fucks out there. It doesn't say that. Uh, Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe TM technology pioneered by Manscaped. Unfortunately, the razor is not edible for you fatties out there. That doesn't say that. I'm ad-libbing here. But it kind of goes along with the vibe of what I've been told to say. (laughs) Guys, please use my code. Use code SPEARS. 20% off free shipping, manscaped.com. Grab yourself a razor. They are really good. I use it. I still use it. And I will not be fucking swapping to something else because uh, until they come up with a Manscaped 4.0, you know? Please use my code or otherwise I'll have to fucking change how I do the read. (laughs) And I don't want to fuck. I'm not going to fucking do that. Right, let's get in the miscellaneous bit at the end here. Miscellaneous bit at the end is sponsored by Patreon. If you want uh, an extra Spearhead Sundays every single week, support me on Patreon. You get access to the Discord server as well. Um, And I will be continuing the podcast uh, after this over on Patreon exclusively if you want a little bit of extra Spears in your life. It's cheap as fuck. Just just do it. huh? Support the show, you fuck. Um, All right, this one is a failed threesome update. Um, now this one came in, let me have a look, almost threesome. So let me just refresh the class here. This one came in, uh, I can't remember what, I'm just, this came came in from Sarah. Uh, she said, just started supporting on Patreon, sick bitch alert. Um, she was, uh, from Canada going to uni, uh, in the U S she met and is now dating an Australian, right? Uh, now. Her story is she saw a guy a while back, uh, but he told me they just wanted to be friends, not a big deal. The next weekend, we were at a mutual friend's house drinking. His best friend, who happens to be female, starts hitting on me. She's very attractive, so I accepted her advances. She invited me to go home with her, so I did. The problem was she asked the guy that I had just ended with to walk us back to her house. All three of us ended up in bed together. I paid more attention to the girl, but the guy was now showing interest in me. This escalated between all three of us, but no sex occurred. Now, I'm good friends with the girl, but the guy stopped talking to me altogether, even going as far as to blocking me. 
I recently found out that all three of us have class next semester. I have no interest in the guy anymore, but still want the friendship with the girl. So what should I do when I see them both in class? Um, now, I can't really remember the advice that I gave her, but I just said, oh, fucking just ignore the cunt. You don't need to worry about him. That's him being a loser. So it doesn't really matter about him. And then just continue as normal was kind of my advice. Uh, and then I, and then because her boyfriend was Australian, I tried to hook him up with the threesome because I'm a good guy, you know? Uh, and we have this update here. Hey, Lewis, thanks for the advice you gave. I did, in fact, listen to the podcast with my boyfriend. He was all for a threesome with me and the girl. I'm such a fucking good wingman. I'm a legend. I've gotten so many people laid with this shit. Go fucking go for it. He was all for a threesome with me and the other girl. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Fuck. Fuck. I failed. I've, sorry, my, my Australian brother, I failed you. The girl ended up switching out of the class all three of us were in to take a different one. Well, maybe you could have a devil's threesome with this other guy, huh? You could fucking, you could be in the middle of this spit roast. I'm sorry, that's disrespectful. I take it back. All three of us were in to take a different one. Her and I are doing fine and the friendship is good. As for the guy who had blocked me because he didn't get some, he just doesn't show up to the class and he wonders why it's taken him five and a half years to complete a four-year degree. I know that wasn't exactly the update you may have been expecting, but it's all I have for you. Stay posted, be though, because my life is one big miscellaneous bit at the end. I may come back for future advice. Have a shit one, Sarah. Um, that's 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 terrible. Uh, and and I would say, if you are listening to this with your boyfriend, uh, I would like to say, Sarah, you're a coward, uh, and you need to, you really need to hook this guy up. Um, and and that's that's what I that's just what I feel like saying. Uh, and that might not be good advice, but I am standing with my brother and and trying to finish the job that uh, that I started many weeks ago. And that is, I will not rest until this man has his fun. Um, no, seriously, that's good. I think that's a good that's a good fucking outcome. You don't have any bullshit drama. You don't have to worry about it. You still get your friendship with this girl, and this other guy fucks off. That's a good win for everyone. And uh, I'm happy for for the four the four of you or the three minus one of you, and that's great. So good on you, cunts. Um, all right, now we have uh, this one, which I'm going to finish up with, and then I will continue on over on Patreon if you want to support me there. Um, we have this. I am fucking a girl that looks like my sister. Let's go. Hey, Lewis. My name is Tom. I've been seeing this girl for a couple of months now, not too regularly or anything, but enough to have hung out as friends as well as hung out when we were hooking up. Although before I did have her on my Snapchat for almost a year before ever meeting her, and this might sound obvious, but she looks very different in person than online in photos. Not worse or anything, just different. I'm trying to say I didn't notice that she looked like anyone I recognized until I started seeing her in person. Okay, so you have been hitting on this girl over social media thinking that she's really hot and then you meet her in person and find out she looks like your sister. That's rough. That is fucking tough. It wasn't until about the third or fourth time of hanging out that I noticed that she kind of looked like my sister when she laughed and when she smiled at me after we were joking about something. Then I realized she has very similar features to my sister. Same hair, same smile, same eyes. Oh no, dude. This is bad. I'd be pulling out. Not during sex. I mean, literally, I'd be pulling out of this interaction. Um, I was weirded out completely when she, when the thought popped into my head, and we haven't had sex since. We're still talking, though. Oh, that's bad. So you have had... So you realize during sex? Bad. By the way, we have not met each other's families yet or anything like that, although we do have some mutual friends. Yeah, see, that's the danger, isn't it? Is, is is bringing home a girl who looks just like your sister and your mum and dad realising, ah, oh, fuck, I think we raised a guy that wanted to fuck his sister. What did we do wrong? You know? That is quite bad. Like, I I would imagine, like, my, my girlfriend looks nothing like my brother. My brother has black hair. He looks like he'd stab you at a train station, covered in tattoos. He's got a rat's tail. Uh, my girlfriend is beautiful and has red hair, very tall. Very different types of people. If I brought home a woman 
who just looked like my brother, I think mum would go, I, I, do you know? You know? That's that's not I that's not ideal. Really not ideal to bring home a girl who looks like your sibling because mum and dad definitely notice. Cause they have the perspective of watching you grow up. They love you more than anything. They know what you look like. So they're gonna notice that shit straight away. Although my sister is a fair bit bit younger than the person I'm seeing, is it weird to stop seeing her because of this? Yeah, see what what is what is going to be very weird is that I don't know how old your sister is, but I'm assuming much younger teens, maybe. Uh, what's going to be very strange is when, say, this relationship works out long term, when you all start growing up, when you all hit like mid, like 20, 30, and everyone just kind of starts looking like how they're going to look for the rest of their life. If they become even more alike, that's going to become even more of a problem because, you know, one day you could fucking, if, if you all come home for Christmas and you wake up in the morning, it's really early in the morning and you see your girlfriend at the fucking kitchen bench making herself breakfast, it's really early, you're a bit tired and you grab her on the ass being a bit cheeky, Christmas spirit, and she turns around and it's your sister, that's an issue. It, what would be even more of an issue would be if she misinterprets the signal and she thinking because you're dating someone that looks like you, like her, and you've been dating that person who looks like her for years, she notices that obviously you must have the hots for her, but didn't want to go there because it was too taboo. And then because of how the way that your parents raised you, she feels the same about you. And after you accidentally squeeze her ass thinking it's your girlfriend, she turns around and kisses you on the mouth. That's an issue. That's a problem or a fantasy. It's a very popular category on Pornhub, not my cup of tea, but most people are into it, apparently. You look at the studies, the stats, a lot of people want to fuck their sister. So, you know what, man? More power to you. And I think you should dump this girl and fuck your sister. You know what? Skip the sister, root your mom. Because that's where she comes from. And that's where you're obviously heading. Work your way up the family tree. Fuck your sister, fuck your mom, and jump on dad's dick. After that... You know, maybe you could fucking have sex with grandma's urn. Get a hat trick going. Sister, mom, grandma. Fulfill the prophecy. Fuck grandma's urn. Get a washcloth. <laughs> Make sure you wee afterwards. You don't want a UTI. It's a story at least. Although my sister is a few bit younger than the person I'm seeing. Is it weird to stop seeing her because of this? I'm worried that I'm going to end up being the biggest dick ever if I end things with her without any explanation and telling her seems like it would make things worse. Hope you can share your thoughts on it. I would appreciate the advice. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, fuck. That's a hard... That is a... On a serious note, that's a very difficult situation. I don't think that I could... I couldn't do it. I couldn't be in a relationship. I don't have a sister, but... That's an issue. If I kept thinking about my sister when looking at my girlfriend, it I, I couldn't separate the two. You need to end it. That's what I think. I mean, the, the fact that you're emailing me means you're fucking desperate about this issue and you're thinking about it a lot, you know? I've had a lot of issues in my life. I've never emailed a comedian about it. That's... I, yeah, but 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 the, then the question is, how do you break up with this girl? Because you can't just fucking... I mean, maybe you can tell her. How does that conversation go? You know? Like, oh, I want to talk to you. Sit down. I like you as a person, but... And I didn't notice this when we were talking online. However... I have noticed that you look almost exactly like my sister and it's a really big turn off and I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, maybe that, maybe you should just be honest. Maybe it's not, it's kind, it's not mean, but she also can't argue with it. Do you know what I mean? Like she really, what's she going to do? Get a haircut? Bitch, it's your face. 
It's it, look, it would be it would be fucking difficult for her, but ultimately it in 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 terms of like reasons to get dumped because you look like my sister is got to be one of the better ones, you know? You could you could have cheated on her and said, "Look, I cheated on you. I can't continue the relationship." You could have just fucking hate her. You could say, look, I think you're ugly. Or you, or like, oh, I just think you're a bad person to be around or I don't like your vibe. There are worse reasons to get dumped for that are a lot more damaging to the soul, you know? That is a fucking thing. I dumped a girl because she cheated on me back when I was fucking 18. That hurt on a 17, sorry. That hurt me. I had to get over that. You know, if if she told me that I just look like her brother, I mean, at at worst, I'm just kind of confused. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like I I think that it's not nice breaking up with someone. It's a difficult conversation to have. But of all the reasons you could have to dump someone, that's got to be up there in terms of like not like they can't weasel out of it. If you go, oh, I don't love you anymore, they can like try harder. You know, it probably won't work, but that's something that they could convince you they could do. Like, oh, if I try harder and try and be a better partner, maybe we could fix. But you, like, what is she going to do? I'll get plastic surgery. I'll dye my hair. I'll change the way I dress. Like, she can't do anything. And, and, and she can't feel bad. Like, it's not her fault. It's not your fault. You haven't had a fight. I think that you should be honest. And, and because you know what? The good thing about this is in in like six months, she'll just think it's funny. And she'll tell her girlfriends, you go, yeah, he dumped me because I look just like his sister. That's funny. I think you be honest. I think you sit her down. It sounds like it's early in the relationship. You haven't been dating for that long. I think you sit her down and uh, you just go, look, Sarah, I think you're a lovely person. I like you. I enjoy talking to you but there's a problem that I cannot get past and that is, and it sounds silly, but you look just like my sister. And every time I look at you, every time I kiss you, every time I talk to you, every time you laugh, every time we have sex, I cannot stop myself thinking about my sister. And it's a massive turnoff. It makes me feel confused and it makes me a bad partner. Maybe that's what you go with. You looking like my sister makes me a terrible boyfriend because I don't think about you. I just think about how you look like my sister and it makes me uncomfortable, which makes me uh, a, a bad partner. So I don't want this to get too serious. I don't want this to go too deep. I don't want to hurt you deeply by getting too involved with you. I think that we should end things here. I've thought about it a lot. There's nothing you can do, and I'm really sorry, and you deserve better than what I can give you because I cannot give you anything without feeling like I'm giving dick to my sister. Sorry. I reckon that's the go. I think just be honest. It's a tough conversation. Just because breaking up with someone is a bad thing and there will probably be tears does not mean it's a mean thing, right? Ask yourself... Could you honestly be a good partner long term to this girl if you keep thinking she looks like a, your sister? If the answer is no, breaking up with her is actually a really nice thing to do as long as it's done in a not mean way. Don't be a bitch. Man up. Tell her the truth and make it final. Don't string her along. Break up with her and then go, right, we're not friends we're not going back to friends. We're broken up. We're moving on. In the nicest way possible, it's done. And then you sever nicely. You give her some fucking closure and you move on and then and then it's done. Too many cunts break up with people. We still be friends. You can't. All right? That just means you don't, neither of you move on properly. And then when someone fucks someone else, the other one gets angry and cries because you never ended it properly. All right? It's done. It's done. That's my advice. I reckon tell the truth. Because, fuck, I can't even think of how that would go badly. Don't get into showing her photos. 
That's the only way that I think you can grow badly is she goes, show me a fucking photo. And then you start arguing over how similar she is. That's the only thing where I could think, yeah, that could go bad. So I think that if that happens, you just need to say, look, I know it's not exactly similar, but it's similar enough to fuck with my head enough to make me a bad partner, which is not what you deserve. I can't do it. And be honest, it's you. It's not her. Just say, look, it fucks with me. I can't deal with it. And I never should have got involved with you in the first place. Sorry. You deserve better. And then bang, done. Definitely update me on how this goes. I must, I have to know. If you have a question that you would like to send into the podcast, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. Summarize it in the subject line. I'm running low on email still. 10,000 cunts listen to this every week. Can some of you please send me your stories? Send me your live advice questions. I'm running low. All right? Send it in. Yes, you. Thinking about, oh, should I tell? Yes. Send it, cunt. And don't send me six paragraphs either. That won't make it to the show. This was two. Three, you're pushing it. I'll del- I deleted a couple that were, like, long. So edit yourselves, please. Um, I'm going to continue on here uh, on the Patreon podcast. I want to talk about uh, some some shit that I've been watching. I've been watching the, the new American God series on Amazon, and I've noticed something fucking hilarious and weird about it. I'm going to talk about it. You don't have to have seen the fucking show to be amused by it. And I've got a bunch of other stuff as well. So if you want more Spearhead Sundays, it's up right now on Patreon. Uh, Google Lewis Spears Patreon. At, it's whatever tier you fucking join up. You get the podcast. And then uh, there's also a Discord server and early access to all of my shit. And uh, grab your tickets. LewisSpears.com, Melbourne. Uh, the first Saturday show has sold out. Uh, told you. The next Friday and all the Fridays and Saturdays are filling up real quick. They'll be the next ones to go. And I think opening night as well, Wednesday, is looking pretty full too. So just just fucking buy them. Don't be that dickhead that misses out. They're going quick, all right? Restrictions are done. COVID's going away. We're getting vaccinated as well. Come celebrate our freedom uh, at the shows, all right? I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you have a shit one.